Home Health Aid Unit 4 Nutrition Statement of Purpose The purpose of this unit is to examine the dietary requirements of the client respecting budgetary, environmental, and personal resources. This module includes the food pyramid and common therapeutic diets as planned and prepared in the home setting. Recognition of personal preferences, cultural and religious dietary practices is discussed. Performance Standards Objectives Upon completion of the five theory hours, three clinical hours, and assignments, the learner will be able to do the following. Define the terminology. Recognize the key principles of nutrition. Identify potential nutritional problems for home health clients. Demonstrate basic understanding of therapeutic diets. Discuss key principles of safe food handling and storage. Discuss adaptations necessary for feeding the home care client. Describe the importance of fluid balance and monitoring intake and output. And identify community resources for meeting nutritional needs. Terminology References Content Outline Section 1 The Terminology Section 2 The Key Principles of Nutrition Recommended Dietary Allowances RDA Daily consumption levels of energy and certain nutrients judged by the Food and Nutrition Board to meet the known nutrition needs of practically all healthy people. RDAs are set for energy, protein, certain vitamins, and minerals. Daily values. Nutrient percentages listed on the food label are based on a standard 2,000 calorie diet, allowing comparison of nutrients between products. Consumers can determine if the product is high or low in a given nutrient when deciding to purchase an item. In general, 5% or less daily value is considered low, and 20% or higher is considered high. The basic food categories. Carbohydrates, fiber, fat, protein. Protein deficiency. Commonly thought of as a problem in developing countries. It is common among the poor, elderly, and homeless. Can be a problem among people who are hospitalized for long periods of time, people who are addicted to drugs and or alcohol, and people with eating disorders, such as anorexia nervosa. The new USDA Food Guide Pyramid from mypyramid.gov. It is a more individual approach than in the past. Calculates nutrient needs based on age, sex, and activity level. It recommends more whole grains, fruits, and vegetables, and encourages physical activity and water intake. Components of the food label. Review calories, serving size, daily values, or certain nutrients and ingredient list. Determine better food choices using the food label. Food claims on food labels. Low calorie, which is 40 calories or less per serving. Reduced calorie, at least 25% lower in calories than the reference food. Calorie-free, fewer than 5 calories per serving. Fat-free, less than 0.5 grams of fat per serving. Low-fat, 3 grams or less of fat per serving. Trans-fat-free, less than 0.5 grams of trans-fat per serving. High-fiber, 5 grams or more per serving. Low sodium, 140 milligrams or less sodium per serving. A good source, 10 to 19% of the daily value per serving. Healthy, low in fat, saturated fat, cholesterol, sodium, and containing at least 10% of the daily value for vitamin A, C, iron, calcium, protein, or fiber. 
Check the handouts for basic food categories and food labeling. Section 3. Potential Nutritional Problems for Home Health Clients A. Lack of budgetary, environmental, and personal resources. B. Personal preferences, cultural or religious dietary practices. C. Anorexia, diminished appetite. D. Difficulty eating, swallowing, or altered texture diets. E. Tube feedings. F. Medications. G. Fluid intake. H. Appropriate use of supplements. Check the handouts, Potential Nutritional Problems for Home Health Clients, and Ethnic and Regional Food Patterns. Section 4. Basic Understanding of Therapeutic Diets Discuss the basic principles of common therapeutic diets, cardiac, low-sodium, diabetic, and renal. The Cardiac Diet Low-fat Aim for less than 20-30% to 30 calories. Limit your saturated fats, meats and dairy. Choose healthier fats, like canola oil, light spreads, avocado, and nuts. Low salt. Aim for less than 2,000 mg a day or as ordered by a doctor. Avoid adding salt to food. Limit most processed foods, such as instant, boxed, or frozen meals. Low cholesterol. Only found in foods of animal origin. Limit animal fats in the diet. Choose legumes, soy, nuts, seeds, and whole grains. High fiber. Include fruits and vegetables, 5 to 9 servings daily. Choose whole grains, at least 3 to 5 servings daily. Include beans and legumes daily. Limit alcohol. Avoid smoking. Exercise regularly with physician approval. And reduce body weight if necessary. The low sodium diet. Cook with as little salt as possible. Avoid highly salted processed foods, such as salty snacks, salad dressings, soy sauce, ketchup, pickles, frozen foods, canned soup, and cheese. Avoid smoked, processed, or cured meats and fish, such as ham, bacon, corned beef, cold cuts, sausage, anchovies, tuna, and sardines. Use salt substitutes with caution. Watch out for sodium on the food label. Limit your alcohol. Reduce body weight if necessary. Exercise regularly with physician approval. Limit your total fat, saturated fat, and cholesterol in the diet. The diabetic diet. The goal is to maintain as near normal blood glucose levels as possible through balancing food choices, medications, and exercise. Avoid diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA, or elevated blood glucose. Symptoms include polyuria, polydipsia, hyperventilation, dehydration, ketones, and fatigue. Acute illnesses can lead to DKA. Managed with insulin, fluid and electrolyte replacement, and medical treatment. Avoid hypoglycemia, or low blood glucose. Symptoms include headaches, confusion, poor coordination, blurred vision, and seizures. Treatment begins with carbohydrates, 15 grams, and glucose testing. Adequate carbohydrate, protein, and fat should be included to maintain a healthful body weight. Meals and snacks should be spaced to maintain blood glucose levels. Excessive sweets, simple carbohydrates, and juices should be avoided. The Renal Diet Protein, potassium, sodium, fluid, and phosphorus, limited as directed by MD. Plan a menu for a client on a therapeutic diet. Check the handouts, therapeutic diet, and patient education diet handouts. Low sodium diet, low fat, low cholesterol diet, diabetes diet basics, and renal diet. Section 5. Key principles of safe food handling and storage. A. Principles of safe food handling. First, the personal hygiene of the food handler. Wash hands thoroughly with soap and water before handling food. Use clean utensils for taste testing. Avoid preparing food when sick. Second, kitchen sanitation. Clean surfaces and dishes with hot water and detergent. Cutting boards. Plastic is preferable to wood for cleaning. Prepare raw foods separately from meats to be cooked. Thoroughly wash and scrub fresh fruits and vegetables before serving. Third, storage conditions and practices. 
food temperatures maintained below 40 degrees or above 140 degrees. Avoid storing protein-containing foods at room temperatures for more than two hours. Keep meats in the lowest part of the refrigerator to avoid contamination. Keep storage areas clean to avoid contamination of new foods. Store foods properly as soon as possible after purchase. Buy only the quantities that you will use before spoilage can occur. B. The danger zone for food storage. The temperature at which most microorganisms grow rapidly is between 40 and 140 degrees. Pork must be cooked to an internal temperature of 170 degrees. C. Common foodborne illnesses. 1. Seminolosis, which is transmitted by contaminated food or infected individuals. Onset is within 12 to 36 hours. Duration lasts 2 to 7 days. Symptoms include severe headache, vomiting and diarrhea, abdominal cramps and fever. The infants and elderly are most susceptible. Death can occur in severe cases. 2. Perfringens poisoning. Transmitted by contaminated food, withstands most cooking temperatures and will grow in meats and gravies without proper refrigeration. Onset is 8 to 20 hours. Duration 24 hours. Symptoms, diarrhea without vomiting, diarrhea, inflammation of the stomach and intestines. 3. Streptococcal infections. Transmitted by consuming raw milk. Killed by adequate heating of at least 165 degrees. The onset varies. The duration can last several days. Symptoms, sore throat. 4. Staphylococcal poisoning. The most common cause of food poisoning. It is transmitted by food handlers carrying the bacteria. The onset is 3 to 8 hours. Duration, 1 to 2 days. Symptoms, vomiting, diarrhea, prostration, and abdominal cramps. 5. Botulism. Transmitted by contaminated foods stored in the absence of oxygen. Produced in low-acid foods held in the refrigerator for two weeks or longer. The spores are heat-resistant but destroyed by the high temperatures of a pressure canner. Onset, 12 to 36 hours. Duration, 3 to 6 days. Symptoms, double vision, inability to swallow, speech difficulty, progressive respiratory paralysis. The fatality rate is about 65%. 6. Parasites. Trichinosis is the most common parasitic disease in the U.S. It is present in meat, especially pork. Must be cooked to an internal temperature of 170 degrees to kill the parasites. Symptoms include diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. Long-term symptoms include recurrent fever and muscular pains. D. Storage times for meat and poultry. Review the handout. Fresh meats, 1 to 5 days. Fresh poultry, 1 to 2 days. Frozen meats, 4 to 6 months on average. Fresh processed products such as milk, 3 to 7 days. Fresh eggs, 3 to 5 weeks. E. Product dating. Product dating is not required by law and is an indicator of quality, not necessarily safety. Sell-by dates are often used on highly perishable products like milk, meat, and bread. Best if used by dates are used on baked, packaged, or canned goods. The food is safe to eat, but may have an altered taste or texture. Expiration dates, use by or use before dates, are indicators for best quality. These are used on refrigerated items, such as eggs, yogurt, etc. Properly stored foods can be used beyond the product dates. Mishandled foods with an off odor or flavor or appearance should be discarded regardless of the product date. Review the handouts for basic food handling safety and cold food storage chart. Section 6. Adaptations necessary for feeding the home care client. Review feeding the client, NATAP or DHS Module 11. A. Positioning to facilitate swallowing. It is best in a location associated with eating. Furniture or equipment. Boxes and pillows to prop up. B. Promoting self-care. Plates with rims. Cups with large handles. Utensils with built-up handles. Socialization. Section 7. The importance of fluid balance and monitoring intake and output. 
Review Household Measurements, NATAP or DHS Module 7. Review the key principles of fluid balance. Refer to NATAP or DHS Module 11. The importance of fluids. Types, oral, IV, and NG. And fluid balance. Intake and output. Calculations and documentation. Alternate feeding methods not performed by a home health aide. Parental. TPN or hyperalimentation. Enteral tube feedings. Home health aid responsibilities. Section 8. Common resources for meeting nutritional needs. A. Community resources. Senior centers. Home delivered meals. Food stamps. Food banks. Community and church-based meal programs. Learner activity. Wheel of fortune. Good for vocabulary. Step 1. Empty blocks representing the letters of a word or phrase which has been predetermined by the instructor are drawn on a board. Step 2. The class is divided into two to four teams. Only one person may respond to the question for the team, but the team may discuss the options for the answer during 15 seconds allowed for a response to the question. Step 3. Each team attempts to gain points and solve the identity of the word or phrase by guessing letters which make up the word or phrase. Correct answers result in the team receiving points for each of the letters in the puzzle. Incorrect guesses pass the opportunity to guess to another team. Specified letters, 4 to 6, may be bought using points earned from previous correct guesses. Learner Activity Jeopardy Game A minimum of 25 questions need to be developed. They may be in groups of 5 that are related to a particular topic. Questions should be single word fill in, true or false, or multiple choice. Questions are written on slips of paper that are folded and arranged in categories according to difficulty for game points on the game board. The class needs to be divided into two to four teams. Only one person may respond to the question for the team, but the team may discuss the options for the answer during the 15 seconds allowed for a response to the question. A correct answer allows the team to gain the specified points and select a subsequent question. An incorrect answer allows another team to answer, win the points for the question, and select the subsequent question. Handout Basic Food Categories What are the different categories? Carbohydrates Fiber, Fat, and Protein 1. Carbohydrates Compounds composed of single or multiple sugars Complex carbohydrates are long chains of sugars. Glucose from carbohydrates is the preferred fuel for the body. In general, it should comprise 55 to 60% of the diet. 2. Fiber. Composed of long chains of sugars that humans cannot digest. Classified as soluble and insoluble based on how they dissolve in water. The benefits of fiber. Promotes fullness. Prevents constipation. Prevents diverticulosis. Reduces the risk for colon cancer, heart and artery disease. Improves glucose control and may help lower blood cholesterol. 3. Fats Triglycerides are one of the main classes of dietary lipids. Essential fatty acids are fats the body needs but cannot make. Omega-6 fatty acids are essential. They are found in vegetable oils, seeds, nuts, and whole grains. Omega-3 fatty acids are also essential and are found primarily in fatty fish, and to a lesser degree in flaxseed and canola oil. Saturated fatty acids, monounsaturated fatty acids, and polyunsaturated fatty acids differ in the number and point of saturation. This affects the hardness of the fat at room temperature, and has differing effects on blood lipids and heart disease risk. Trans fats are produced through hydrogenation. Trans fats elevate bad LDL cholesterol and lower beneficial HDL. This may lead to an even greater heart disease risk than saturated fat. In general, fats should be limited to 20 to 30 percent of the diet. 4. Protein. Distinctive because they contain nitrogen and are made up of amino acids. There are nine essential amino acids that must be supplied by the diet. Supports numerous body functions. Proteins support growth and maintenance in the body, building new tissue and replacing worn-out cells. Enzymes, hormones, and other chemicals are formed from proteins. Proteins build antibodies to defend against foreign proteins. 
They are critical for maintaining fluid and electrolyte balance. Acid base balance, blood pH, is maintained by proteins buffering capacity. Proteins transport substances such as lipids, minerals, and oxygen in the body. Emergency energy to fuel body functions can also be produced from proteins. Protein quality is determined by its amino acids, digestibility, and how well it supports growth. Complete proteins are found in meat, dairy, eggs, and soy products. Incomplete proteins are found in grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds. When eaten in combination, the proteins are complementary and meet amino acid needs. In general, most people need approximately 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. 15 to 20 percent of the diet should be a high quality protein. Handout New Food Labeling Starting in May of 1994, labels of all processed foods and most raw foods will tell consumers not only what their foods contain, but also how they relate to a healthy diet. See the chart below for terms being used and what their definitions are. Free. A serving contains no or a physiologically inconsequential amount. Less than 5 calories, less than 5 milligrams of sodium, less than 0.5 grams of fat, less than 0.5 grams of saturated fat, less than 2 milligrams of cholesterol or less than 0.5 grams of sugar. Low. A serving and 50 grams of food, if the serving is small, contains no more than 40 calories. 140 milligrams of sodium, 3 grams of fat, 1 gram of saturated fat, and 15% of calories from saturated fat or 20 milligrams of cholesterol. It's not defined for sugar. For very low sodium, no more than 35 milligrams of sodium. Lean. A serving of food and 100 grams of meat, poultry, seafood, and game meats contains less than 10 grams of fat, less than 4 grams of saturated fat, and less than 95 milligrams of cholesterol. Extra Lean A serving of food and 100 grams of meat, poultry, seafood, and game meat contains less than 5 grams of fat, less than 2 grams of saturated fat, and less than 95 milligrams of cholesterol. High A serving contains 20% or more of the daily value for a particular nutrient. Good source. A serving that contains 10 to 19% of the daily value for a nutrient. Reduced. A nutritionally altered product contains 25% less of a nutrient or 25% fewer calories than a reference food. Cannot be used if the reference food already meets the requirement for a low claim. Less. A food contains 25% less of a nutrient or 25% fewer calories than a reference food. Light. An altered product contains one-third fewer calories or 50% of the fat in a reference food. If 50% or more of the calories comes from fat, the reduction must be 50% of the fat, or the sodium content of a low-calorie, low-fat food had been reduced by 50%. The claim light in sodium may be used. Or the term describes properties as texture and color, as long as the label explains the intent. For instance, light brown sugar, or light and fluffy. More. A serving contains at least 10% of the daily value of a nutrient, more than a referenced food. Also applies to fortified, enriched, and added claims for altered foods. Percent fat-free. A product must be low-fat or fat-free, and the percentage must accurately reflect the amount of fat in 100 grams of food. Thus, 2.5 grams of fat in 50 grams of food results in 95% fat-free claim. Healthy. A food is low in fat and saturated fat, and a serving contains no more than 480 milligrams of sodium and no more than 60 milligrams of cholesterol. Fresh. A food is raw, has never been frozen or heated, and contains no preservatives. Irradiation at low levels is allowed. Or the term accurately describes the product, for instance, fresh milk or freshly baked bread. Fresh frozen. The food has been quickly frozen while still fresh. Blanching is allowed before freezing to prevent nutrient breakdown. Learner Activity – Putting the Food Label to Work Pass around a grocery bag full of different types of food labels. Good labels to use are regular Campbell's soup labels, healthy choice Campbell's soup, packaged breads and crackers, instant cereal, juice and juice cocktails, rice-a-roni, and other typical foods that clients might choose. 
Review the basic components of the label, such as calories, serving size, daily value, and the ingredient list. Compare similar items and discuss how to make informed choices about which foods are healthier based on the food label. Note any food claims on the package and review what specific nutritional information the claim is conveying. For instance, how much fat is allowed in an item claiming to be low fat, etc. Briefly state that there has been an evolution of methods for guiding consumers on choosing foods to meet their nutritional needs. For instance, the basic four and the previous food guide pyramid. Each was flawed and didn't provide clear direction for individuals to make sound nutritional choices. This new pyramid is the government's new attempt to make it easier for individuals to make good choices for their own nutritional needs. Have the class participants pair up or divide in any reasonable way and access the Food Guide Pyramid online at the above website. Ask the class to first put in their own data and find out what their own nutritional needs are. Ask them to share anything that surprised them. Second, have the class input data for a typical home health client elderly, less physically active, etc. Finally, have the class discuss the different nutritional needs of their clients. Discuss the importance of fluid intake, whole grains, and physical activity for clients. Brainstorm how they can be sensitive to their different needs when talking about diet and nutrition with the clients and their family. Remind them that what one person needs may be quite different from another. Note, if computer access is a problem, the instructor should bring in examples of the food guide's recommendations for people of different age, sex, and activity levels for the class to use in the discussion. Handout, Potential Nutritional Problems for Home Health Clients Lack of budgetary, environmental, and personal resources Low-income individuals often buy foods of low nutritional quality. Few fresh fruits and vegetables. Healthy foods are perceived as more expensive. They may also lack food storage or preparation facilities, such as a refrigerator or freezer space, cooking appliances, etc. They may have limited mobility, difficulty getting food or preparing food. Personal preferences, culture or religious dietary practices. Familiar foods may be comforting. They may be resistant to dietary changes, such as therapeutic diets. Cultural and religious dietary practices should be supported, Family may be helpful in meeting cultural or religious dietary needs. Anorexia, diminished appetite. Depression or loneliness. Lack of a desire to eat or motivation. Poor memory. They can't remember to eat regularly. Difficulty eating, swallowing, altered texture diets. Tooth loss. Poor fitting dentures. CVA. Speech therapist may need to assess swallowing capabilities. Dysphagia may be related to a variety of conditions, but should be assessed to determine food texture needs. Tube feedings. Patients either cannot ingest, digest, or absorb food through normal feedings, such as after CVA, surgery to GI tract, or difficulty eating food, etc. Enteral feedings through the gut are preferred. Patenteral feedings through the veins are sometimes necessary may be fed by continuous drip or bolus. Monitoring for tolerance to feeding is critical. Check residuals. Monitor stool frequency and consistency. Signs of edema or dehydration. Fluid intake and output. And weight changes. Medications. Drugs can alter food intake. Change the appetite. Interfere with taste or smell. Induce nausea or vomiting. Cause dry mouth, oral and or GI tract ulcers. Food and drugs can mutually affect absorption. They change the acidity of the digestive tract, such as antacids. Alter the motility of the digestive tract. Laxatives reduce nutrient absorption. Damage the mucosal cells, as in chemotherapy. And bind nutrients, calcium and iron bind with antibiotics. Fluid intake. Reduced thirst signal. Fear of bladder control, not wanting to go to the bathroom. Total body water is reduced with aging. They are more susceptible to dehydration. Dehydration can lead to increased urinary tract infections, pneumonia, pressure ulcers, confusion, and disorientation. Estimated fluid needs are 1 ounce per kilogram of body weight, usually 6 to 8 glasses per day. 
Appropriate Uses of Supplements Always encourage food as the best source of nutrition. Overall energy needs are lower for the elderly. Protein needs should be met to support the immune system and avoid muscle wasting. Oral supplements are an option for those who simply cannot maintain adequate food intake. Check with the doctor or dietitian for an appropriate supplement. Handout Ethnic Food Patterns Study the table below for the specific ethnic groups and common foods in each food group. These charts are sourced from the Homemaker Home Health Aid 4th edition by Helen Huber and Audrey Spatz, revised by Suzanne Balduzzi, Delmar Publishers Incorporated, Albany, New York, copyright 1994, reproduced with permission. Learner Activity – Practice with Modified Consistency Diets A speech therapist as a guest speaker for this section would be best to lead this section if possible. Have several types of juice and water available with cups and spoons for stirring. Add thicket or whichever thickening agent is available to practice making fluids of various consistencies – honey thick, nectar thick, pudding thick. Working in pairs, have class participants practice making fluid of various consistencies and try them. Have a discussion about what it would be like for a home health client who had to drink thickened fluids, soft, chopped, and or pureed foods. Handout Various Types of Diets Please study the tables below to see the various types of diets, what they're used for, foods allowed, and foods to avoid. Low Sodium Diet A low sodium diet may help manage high blood pressure or hypertension. It may also help with water retention. Study the chart to the right. Look at each category and the foods to be chosen and foods to avoid. Tips for limiting sodium. Try herbs, spices, lemon juice, and other low-sodium condiments to flavor foods. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about sodium in your medications. When dining out, ask for your order to be prepared without salt. Watch for seasoning made from salt, including garlic salt, celery salt, onion salt, seasoned salt, monosodium glutamate, regular soy sauce, barbecue sauce, teriyaki sauce, steak sauce, Worcestershire sauce, flavored vinegar, canned gravy, and mixes. Low-fat, low-cholesterol diet A low-fat, low-cholesterol diet, along with exercise and medications, is useful in improving blood cholesterol levels. There are many types of cholesterol. The bad cholesterol and low-density lipoprotein should be kept as low as possible. The high-density lipoprotein, good cholesterol, is best to keep as high as possible. The body needs cholesterol for several important functions. It makes blood cholesterol from the fat and cholesterol in the diet. Since the body makes all the cholesterol it needs, it is not necessary to eat cholesterol-containing foods. Cholesterol is only found in foods of animal origin, including meat, fish, shellfish, eggs, and dairy products. Again, study the chart to the right for the food categories, what foods to choose, and what to avoid. Effects of Fats on Cholesterol The type of fat you choose can also help improve cholesterol levels. In general, avoiding fats that come from animal sources is recommended. Healthier choices include olive oil, canola oil, nuts, 
olives, fish, and flaxseed. In the chart on the right, you will see types of fat, their sources, and their effects on blood lipids. Diabetes Diet Basics Good control of blood sugars is essential to feel well and reduce medical complications for people with diabetes. Taking medications as directed and limiting the amount of concentrated sugar in the diet is crucial for managing blood sugar levels effectively. The key to diabetic meal planning is choosing healthy foods, eating the right amount of food for your body's needs, and eating at the right times. Try to include a variety of foods at each meal. Choose more fresh vegetables and fruits, frozen or canned vegetables and fruit without added sugar or sauce, whole grain breads, cereals, pasta and crackers, legumes, beans and peas, lean meats, eggs and peanut butter, low-fat milk and light yogurt, and unsweetened juice, but limit it to 4 ounces per day. Choose less sweet sauce, syrup, honey, and added sugar. Vegetables prepared with heavy sauces or syrup. Sweetened breads, donuts, pastries, cakes, or muffins. Baked beans with brown sugar or syrup. Meat or poultry with barbecue sauce or other sugary sauce. Whole milk, regular yogurt, ice cream, and butter. Sweetened juice drinks and teas. Tips for keeping your blood glucose at a healthy level. Eat about the same amount of food each day. Eat meals and snacks at the same times each day. Do not skip meals or snacks. Take your medicines at the same time each day. Exercise at about the same times each day. Achieve and maintain a sensible body weight. Renal Diet Low Sodium, Low Potassium, Low Phosphorus, Fluid Restricted Diet The kidneys are responsible for regulating the amounts of protein, sodium, potassium, phosphorus, and fluids in the body. If your kidneys fail to function properly, waste products and fluids can build up in the body and make you very sick. The key to renal meal planning is restricted foods that are high in these nutrients while choosing foods to meet your specific nutrient needs. Tips for living on a renal diet. Read labels of foods carefully. Avoid any type of salt, including salt substances or light salt. Watch for sodium or potassium compounds, including baking powder substitute, potassium chloride, and tartrate baking powders. Eat plenty of unsalted bread and cereal products. Choose quality protein foods and fresh fruits and vegetables that are lower in potassium or phosphorus. Add extra calories to your diet if you find it difficult to eat. Add oil, unsalted salad dressing, or unsalted gravy to foods. Try using cream for additional calories. Renal Diet Protein Choose fresh meat, poultry, fish, and shellfish, eggs and egg substitute. Limit cheese to 2 ounces a week. Limit milk or dairy products to 1 cup per day. Avoid salted, smoked, cured, and canned meat, deli meat and frozen dinners, frozen or breaded fish, processed cheeses such as American or Velveeta. Avoid dry beans, peas, and lentils, nuts and nut butters, chocolate, cocoa, puddings, or custard mixes. Sodium. Choose fresh, unprocessed foods. Try lemon juice, garlic, dry mustard, pepper, vinegar, extracts and fresh herbs and spices to flavor foods. Avoid processed or packaged foods, baking mixes, seasoning mixes, frozen dinners, salty foods and snacks, tomato juice, pickles, olives, ketchup, soy sauce, and Worcestershire sauce. Watch out for hidden sources of salt, including baking soda, baking powder, chili sauce, MSG, light salt, or substitutes containing sodium or potassium. Potassium For vegetables, choose green beans, beets, cabbage, green peas, cucumber, eggplant, pepper, onion, lettuce. Limit corn, asparagus, okra, cooked carrots, mixed vegetables, and summer squash. Avoid artichokes, avocados, broccoli, and potatoes, greens, raw carrots, pumpkin, spinach, tomatoes, winter squash, and Brussels sprouts. Note on potatoes. Potatoes may be dialyzed. Peel, slice, and soak potatoes in water for 4 hours. Boil for 10 minutes. Toss out the water and cook as desired. Potassium. Fruit. 
Choose applesauce, berries, canned and drained peaches, pears, mandarins, lemon, lime, peach or pear nectar. Limit apple, mango, pear, plum, cherries, tangerine, guava, strawberries and grape juice. Avoid fresh apricots, avocado, banana, cantaloupe, honeydew and cassava melon, dates, oranges and juice, papaya, persimmon, prunes or prune juice, kiwi, fresh peaches, watermelon or dried fruit. Other high potassium foods, all nuts and nut butters, all dried beans and peas, milk and milk products, chocolate and molasses. Phosphorus. Avoid cola, nuts and seeds, dried beans and peas, chocolate, canned sardines and salmon, milk and milk products and organ meats, bran cereals and wheat germ. Fluid. Your fluid intake per day will vary according to your kidney function. Usually six cups, 48 ounces or 1500 milliliters of total fluid per day is the maximum allowed. Ask your doctor how much fluid is appropriate for you. Learner activity. Develop a menu using a therapeutic diet. Working in groups or pairs, depending on size of class, have participants choose one of the main therapeutic diets from class discussion. Have each group make simple, inexpensive menus for one day, three meals, for a client based on the therapeutic recommendations, keeping in mind the food guide pyramid recommendations for servings from each food group. Pass out the special or restricted therapeutic diet handouts to class participants. Tell them to keep them and have copies available to give clients since they are patient education materials. They can also use the recommendations from the handouts when designing their menus. Handout – Basics for Handling Food Safely Safe steps in food handling, cooking, and storage are essential to prevent foodborne illness. You can't see, smell, or taste harmful bacteria that may cause illnesses. In every step of food preparation, follow the four Fight Back Guidelines to keep food safe. Clean. Wash hands and surfaces often. Separate. Don't cross-contaminate. Cook. Cook to proper temperatures. Chill. Refrigerate promptly. Shopping. Purchase refrigerated or frozen items after selecting your non-perishables. Never choose meat or poultry in packaging that is torn or leaking. Do not buy food past its sell-by, use-by, or other expiration dates. Storage Always refrigerate perishable foods within 2 hours, or 1 hour when the temperature is above 90 degrees. Check the temperature of your refrigerator or freezer with an appliance thermometer. The refrigerator should be around 40 degrees or below, and the freezer at 0 degrees or below. Cook or freeze fresh poultry, fish, ground meats and variety meats within two days, other beef, veal, lamb, or pork within three to five days. Perishable foods such as meat and poultry should be wrapped securely to maintain quality and to prevent meat juices from getting onto other food. To maintain quality when freezing meat and poultry in its original package, wrap the package again with foil or plastic wrap that is recommended for the freezer. In general, high acid canned foods such as tomatoes, grapefruit, and pineapple can be stored on the shelf for 12 to 18 months. Low acid canned foods such as meat, poultry, fish, and most vegetables will keep two to five years if the can remains in good condition and has been stored in a cool, clean, dry place. Discard cans that are dented, leaking, bulging, or rusted. Preparation. Always wash hands before and after handling food. Do not cross contaminate. Keep raw meat, poultry, fish, and their juices away from other food. After cutting raw meats, wash your hands, the cutting board, the knife, and countertops with hot soapy water. Marinate meat and poultry in a covered dish in the refrigerator. Sanitize cutting boards by using a solution of 1 teaspoon chlorine bleach in 1 quart of water. Thawing Refrigerator The refrigerator allows slow, safe thawing. Make sure thawing meat and poultry juices do not drip onto other food. Cold water for faster thawing, place food in a leak-proof plastic bag. Submerge in cold tap water. Change the water every 30 minutes. Cook immediately after thawing. Microwave. Cook meat and poultry immediately after microwave thawing. Cooking. Beef, veal, and lamb steaks, roasts, and chops may be cooked to 145 degrees Fahrenheit. All cuts of pork, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Ground beef, veal, and lamb to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. 
all poultry should reach a safe minimum internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Serving. Hot food should be held at 140 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer. Cold food should be held at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. When serving food at a buffet, keep food hot with chafing dishes, slow cookers, and warming trays. Keep food cold by nesting dishes in bowls of ice, or use small serving trays and replace them often. Perishable food should not be left out for more than two hours at room temperature, one hour when the temperature is above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Leftovers. Discard any food left out at room temperature for more than two hours, one hour if the temperature is above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Place food into shallow containers and immediately put in the refrigerator or freezer for rapid cooling. Use cooked leftovers within four days. Refreezing. Meat and poultry defrosted in the refrigerator may be refrozen before or after cooking. If thawed by other methods, cook before refreezing. Cold storage chart. The following short but safe time limits will keep refrigerated food from spoiling or becoming dangerous to eat. Because freezing keeps food safe indefinitely, recommended storage times are for quality only. Please study the following charts. Learner Activity – Feeding Assignment This role-playing exercise is designed to acquaint the student with the feelings experienced by a client who needs to be fed. The student will choose a meal according to personal preference. The student will play the role of an individual who is quadriplegic and aphasic. Another student or a significant other will feed the student an entire meal, including liquids. At the end of the experience, the student will write a brief report about the experience or discuss it verbally. The emphasis should be on positive and negative reactions, feelings about the dependent role, what they have learned that will be useful in future situations. Learner Activity Accessing Nutritional Resources in the Community Working in pairs, have participants choose a community feeding resource to visit. Have each pair contact the community feeding program that they chose and arrange a visit. Afterwards, each pair should write a short description of the program, the people it serves, and their impressions after visiting. 